The New Delhi Half Marathon 2023 was a road race that saw some very fast athletes. At the beginning though, there was a bit of a false start, a bit of a shambles, but it wasn't soon before the runners were set off on their way, starting the race properly this time. Now it's important to note that these athletes had travelled all around the world. One of the favourites in this race was Abenyo. Abenyo is an athlete who has run in the Diamond League and is a world class African distance runner. These athletes were competing for a prize fund of $27,000 for first, $20,000 for second and just over $10,000 for third. This was a race that attracted quite a lot of fast runners so I was interested to see how this panned out. For the first couple of minutes we had Kozgai taking this race out from the beginning. Now I don't know if Kozgai was actually a pacer, I didn't get a chance to look at his running bib close enough, but later on in this race one of the athletes does drop out at the 10k mark, indicating that they were actually a pacer, and if I remember rightly that is actually Kozgai who is currently leading this race. During this race, it was really anyone's game. I really didn't know any of these runners in the field. They went through the first 5k in around 14 minutes and 3 seconds. That's definitely not hanging around and is under 1 hour pace for the half marathon predicted finish time. Obviously most of you know if you've ever raced a half marathon, 5k means nothing. They still had to pace themselves and run a solid race. By the way, that isn't them passing 15k, this is actually nowhere near 10k, let alone 15k, I think that sign was for the way back. At the 20 minute mark, the athletes were looking cool and composed. Here was the elite race for the national elite level runners, fantastic support along the course, great organisation from the marshals and volunteers, but the real race was up the front. Here we had a group of maybe around 8 to 12 athletes. All of these runners were just in this race to win the $27,000 prize fund, but to do that they had to win the race, so it really was a difficult situation where the pacer was trying everything to keep the race honest and hard, but some of these other athletes seemed to want to make the race tactical. The reason some of these guys here wanted to make the race tactical is because they're not fast enough to actually win the race. Maybe they're good at having a sprint finish, so they would try and sprint towards the end. Now with the 10k mark coming up, I noticed that Kozgai, who I think was the pacer, started to move to the side of the field. Now a couple of people tried to actually encourage him to stay at the front, but he looked like he was really struggling. At this point, it's when Abenyo decided to move to the front of the race in his blue Nike vest. Kozgai ended up dropping out of the race at the 10k mark, where they went through the 10k in just over 28 minutes. Some of the other competitors who had actually entered slower and lower distance races were encouraging these elite African runners. They were clapping them, cheering them and really getting a sense of just how fast they can really run. It did get a bit cramped in a couple of places on the course but the elite athletes managed to sort themselves out and kind of navigate around any accidents or obstructions. In this race, we were now 31 minutes into the half marathon and Abenyo decided to make the first aggressive move now that Kozgai, the alleged pacer, has moved out of the race. It was when Abenyo put his foot down that he dropped basically the entire field apart from one or two athletes. Abenyo had only two athletes to drop at the 34 minute mark, but at the 38 minute mark, he basically dropped both of them. No one could keep up with him as he continued to pour the pace on and on and on, running some very fast mile splits. If you look back now to the left of the camera, other than the second place runner, you can see just how far behind the other athletes are. From my prediction, that is, wow, 200, 250, maybe even 300 meters away. 
That's an insane gap that he's created. And to put that into perspective, to drop athletes like that, he would have had to have dropped a 420 or even a 418 mile. I'm not too sure how quick his splits were, as I haven't seen the official ones, but that would be my opinion and what I'd predict that he did actually run. At the 43 minute mark, he had now completely dropped the second place runner. He went through the 15 kilometers in 42 minutes 24 seconds, and really, all Abenyo had to do now was secure this win and try and maintain his lead. Anyone could have come up behind him and had a fast finish, although it was highly unlikely, simply because of how strong he was running this race. Going into this race, Abenyo was the favourite, and I think he can run probably a low 58 minute, or at least a mid 58 minute half marathon at his best. Now currently in this race, he was predicted to run around 1 hour 10 seconds, but because he kept actually increasing, he ended up running way faster than that. Stay tuned till the end to see just how fast he actually ran and also subscribe to this channel if you want to see future running races and athlete news. 48 minutes and Abenu had obliterated everyone. He was now 17 kilometers into the race and it was basically just him against the clock. As he looked back, he could see that the second place runner was a good two to 300 meters away from him, which is at least 30 to 40 seconds lead. That's very impressive considering he ran basically the first 10 to 12 kilometers with around 12 athletes in this group. All he had to do now was secure his win because it was quite difficult to really gauge how hard he was trying. 54 minutes in and he still looked pretty relaxed. He's got a rather noticeable, unusual running form. His right arm comes out a bit further than the left, so I guess his arm carriage sways a bit to the right. His cadence is very fast. And Abenyo went through the 20 kilometers in just over 56 minutes and 20 seconds. He was running strong, very strong, and in my opinion, I believe that he could have gone even faster if he had started at a better pace. Obviously, that $27,000 was now within his reach. He could feel it, sense it, and see it. You know what? You couldn't even see the competitors behind him at this point. He had around a 350 meter lead. At this point, he was waving to the crowd as he only had a few hundred meters left to run coming into the finish line with an unofficial time of 59 minutes and 26 seconds, Abenyo ran a phenomenal race and bagged himself £27,000 slash dollars in the process. Kenya dominated this New Delhi half marathon 2023, and I think the organizers were extremely happy and proud to see a very fast time. 59 minutes and 26 seconds isn't amazing, but it's still fairly impressive. Don't forget you guys, New Delhi Half Marathon tends to be even quicker than that. In the past they've had Bellahue, Mukhtar Edris, Tamarat Tola, and some other big names in this race. I don't know if they've actually lowered the prize money since previous years, um, but the field wasn't as strong as I was actually expecting. Now, Ayana of Ethiopia won the women's race in just under 68 minutes for the half marathon, which is very impressive. I don't think that's a PB for her, and it's definitely not a world record, but it's still a very strong run by herself. In this part of the video, I wanted to talk why these types of races are so important, not only for pro athletes, but for semi-pro athletes. Guys, a lot of these races offer prize money, which allow athletes to earn a living. It's fantastic to see these events and these sponsors being put on all around the world. I believe that some of these runners could actually run way faster than they do, it's just my theory, because if you think about it, they're going to try and conserve as much energy as possible just to win the prize money. There are actually races out there and runners that are designed only for prize money. It's a big business. Think about it. Some of these runners are forced to run so many races by themselves because they have to earn enough money. 
this is a problem, so they can't run as hard as possible every single race. Take for example Eli Kipchoge, he doesn't have to run loads of races because he is such a world class athlete running a time of 2.01 that he only has to run one or two races a year and he'll still earn hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars because of it. Whereas if you're running a 2.07 marathon, 208 marathon or slower you're going to really struggle to find to earn enough money from these prize funds of winning races or coming within the top 10. It's very difficult out there and I've mentioned this in the past that some of these athletes actually are very very struggling because they can't find enough money or enough races. To leave the country a lot of Africans have to go through a difficult process of getting a birth certificate and a visa. Some Kenyans, Ethiopians and Ugandans are born without birth certificates as they have a home birth natural in their community. This can be an issue as they have to go through certain hoops to get a passport and a birth certificate in order to enter these races and travel to them. This is the dream of many Kenyan youngsters, they wish to be able to travel the world and run to all these different races and be able to win them. Then they take the prize money and they buy farms, they buy real estate, buildings, schools, hotels or they invest their money in different businesses within their country. It's fantastic to see and the governments and the sports bodies definitely need to actually support their athletes as much as they possibly can. There has been so much corruption stories over the past decade of athletic governing bodies throughout Africa stealing money, dealing with athletes badly, not promoting or representing them correctly and I can only say that it's so annoying to see. By doing these races like the Delhi Half Marathon, the athletes can earn themselves some money which supports their family, allows them to buy gear and running food and equipment, but on top of that there are even athletes that don't have a sponsor who try to run these races and sometimes end up earning a bit of money. I used to know a guy who could run a 13.58 5k, he was not fast enough to get sponsored but he did enter races and end up winning a decent amount of money every month from entering 3 races every single month. Now he ended up burning out because this is not healthy long term so I would recommend only racing once a month at the most but if you race marathons then maybe 3 times a year at the most. Never more than 3 marathons a year or you will ruin your longevity and the health of your body and it really is not worth it. Some of these Kenyans and Ethiopians are very desperate to earn money and they train extremely hard as a result. Lots of them may actually be doing things that are banned as well like beetroot juice that we won't go into because that's a code word for something else. Anyway you guys, what do you guys think of today's video? Have you ever raced the New Delhi Half Marathon? Would you ever race the New Delhi Half Marathon? And what do you think about Abenyo's performance running just over 59 minutes for the Half Marathon? It was a pretty easy run for him, I think, like I said, he could run under 59 minutes if he tried, and I really believe that he could. I'll keep an eye on Abenyo, and if he races any more races in the future, I'll let you guys know. I should also be covering the Toronto Marathon which was also today, so subscribe to this channel. We also had the Boston Marathon coming up, I'll be covering that. And we have the New York City Marathon coming up, I'll also be covering that. Some big names in all of these races. Be sure to subscribe, please get me to 2000 likes on this video and I'll catch you guys in tomorrow evening's upload. Peace out.